Happy Friday. Welcome into Camel Call Friday. I'm Chris Haymeyer. Evan and I will be on the back half of this episode talking about everything winter sports and getting you set for spring sports, including baseball. If you missed the Camel Call Live podcast earlier in the week, I invite you. It's an hour-long conversation with Campbellhead baseball coach Justin Hare, of course, has been a part of this program for 16 years and is in the midst of the best run ever in Campbell baseball history. Four straight trips to the NCAA tournament, and he may just have his best team ever. He talks about that and a lot of other things in the podcast, but we pulled out for you his preview of his 2023 Camels. It's right now on Camel Call Friday. Coach, 2023 is here. It's a brand new season coming off, as I said. It has been an incredible five years in terms of, of success on, on the field. When you look ahead at this season, what excites you about this 2023 team? I think what excites me about this team is is that even with the success that we've had, we've got a, a good portion of returners that are still very hungry to improve and get better um, and hopefully leave their stamp on, on this place. Obviously, with Tommy and, and Zach having such a, 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 a tremendous two-year period and then being first-round draft picks and guys like Ryan Chassie that were here for four years – got drafted, a guy like Ty Babin that was here for five years, graduates with three degrees and four <laughs> regional right. appearances. Like, you got some guys that really stamped and left a, a legacy that are now gone, but you've got guys that, that have been here for a little bit or, or even maybe last year was their first year or first year that they played a lot that are hungry to be able to stamp their legacy and, and, and leave this place better than how they found it. And they're working very hard at that. And so that's what's exciting to me for those guys. And then we've got a crop of new guys that are that are really, really exciting. And, and they're happy to be here and excited to be here. And and that's a piece that that has been a transition. We, we there there was a long period of time that people weren't saying like, man, I really just want to go to Campbell. Like, yeah. that's that's my number one school. That's my number one spot. And so. Now we've got some guys both from the high school ranks and the junior college ranks that are saying like, man, the, the development there is great and, and we can go and we can win and we can do something special and they're excited to be here and they want to be a part of something special. And so they're working extremely hard. And so, you know, the, the, the depth of talent I think that we have and the depth of work that we, we are putting in. I'm excited to see how this group of guys and their one ride together, what we talk about a lot is, it's, it's a different team than last year and yep. the year before and so on and so forth, and it'll be a different team next year. They get one ride together. We get one opportunity to make it special, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing some of those guys kind of come into their own and be able to stamp their own legacy. Let's talk pitching. What do you like about a pitching staff that from the outside looking in looks deeper than it's ever have been for you? Yeah, the the depth of stuff that we have. I mean, we've, you know, I think on scout night, I think we had 12 or 13 guys that were 94 miles an hour plus. We threw 20. 12 or 13 guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a little, again, it's a little <laughs> bit silly when it comes to that. Um, 19 of the 20 guys we threw that night were 90 plus. And, Come on. And yeah. And the one that didn't was a sidearm guy, you know, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's exciting and it's, and it's fun to dream on for sure. But, but we're excited because for us to get to where we want to go, which for the longest time and, and we'll remain this, our goal is to get to Omaha. We don't shy away from that. We don't run away from that. We don't minimize that. It is very hard to be one of the last eight teams in the country playing. We've been, one of the last 20 teams playing two out of the last three years. And, and we want um, to be able to break through and, and be one of the last 16 and then one of the last eight teams playing. And to be able to do that, you have to be able to match up on the mound. You have to have enough bullets per se on the mound to, to work your way through a regional and, and, and beat some very good clubs. You don't do that with guys that don't have stuff. And, and, um, and so that's something that, that we've been able to develop over time and certainly have a depth of stuff that we've never had before. But, I mean, it, it begins on Friday night with, with Cade Keeler and, and the opportunity that, that he has, again, to take another step forward and, and, and separate himself from, from some of the really good arms we've had in the past and, and kind of stamp his legacy and, and put our best foot forward on Friday nights with him. 
Uh, Cade Keeler in a lot of reports. People think he could be your next first-round draft pick. What makes him special? What makes him a, a first-rounder? He's the consummate worker. You know, he's um, a guy that has um, done nothing but but go all in on every part of being a student athlete here at Campbell. He's a leader in the community, a leader in the clubhouse. He's going to graduate in three years wow. um, with about a 3.9 GPA. <laughs> um, and, you know, set, set, you know, him and Tommy tied for the school record for, for strikeouts in the season last year with 111. And so, you know, he's just a guy that, that shows up every day, works his tail off, leads by example and and you know has never shied away from any role that we've put him in whether that's as a bullpen guy he started on Friday nights as a freshman a little bit bounced back to the bullpen then we then we we needed to to try to get some RPI points you know towards the tail end of last year and so we moved him to a Tuesday and and he drew the hardest you know, the hardest uh, assignments and all that kind of stuff and never shied away from it. So he's very much a, a hardworking, blue-collar, uh, upstanding young man, but but is a lead-by-example guy that, that uh, has a chance to be really, really special. He is one of uh, 12 guys on your team named Cade, <laughs> and we'll talk about another Cade who's a heck of a pitcher, Cade Boxrucker. And you mentioned him a little bit, but Ty Cummings, two returners who – Gosh, are, are really, really good for you and, and looking to take that next step. Yeah, you know, Cade Boxrucker, he's a guy, a freshman year, was a guy that we thought we, you know, honestly, we thought he was going to be uh, in in front of where maybe Cade Keeler was and um, started early and, and struggled and uh, was up and down. And then, you know, towards the end of his freshman year, just continued to work and get better. He started the regional final game at Mississippi State and, and performed very well as a true freshman. Um, broke his ankle last year, came back about halfway through the year. I remember him calling me in January and just saying, hey, coach, I broke my ankle. I jumped up for a ball, whatever, whatever. And, you know, I was like, all right, man, well, you know, we'll just get you back and, and you know, you got to get surgery. Let's figure it out. And he goes, coach, I just want to let you know I'm pitching this year. Like, there's no question. Like, I don't care if I'm – if it's May 1st that I'm healthy, I'm throwing this year. I'm wow. not taking a red shirt. I will be back. I will be ready to go. Um, and, and he was cleared to throw before, before the projected date and, and was a big cog for us, um, allowed us to, to move Keeler to the midweeks and, and him solidify that Saturday um, starters role last year. And now, you know, he, he's a guy that, that should factor into our top three or four and has a chance to be a draft pick as well. Had a tremendous summer in the Cape Cod League and, and um, you know, again, just continues to work and try to push himself and, and get better. And then what can you say about Ty Cummings? He's got over 100 career appearances <laughs> yeah. in two years. Wow. Um, I mean, he's, he, he is the competitor's competitor. He's, he's worked on his body. He's worked on his stuff. He's been up to 98 miles an hour. The slider's gotten better. The changeup's gotten better. He gave up one earned run all summer in the Cape. Wow. Um, you know, basically was, was the best relief pitcher in the Cape all, all summer, which is the premier um, college baseball summer league. All the best players in the country play there. Um, He's just a stud, man. Like, and 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 again, just another guy that that is a, a really good student and a really good worker. We we've just got some really really good people, and, and Ty Cummings is at the top of that list in terms of just quality human being that's going to work, lead by example, and and be somebody that we can count on day in and day out, and never turn down the ball, and never turn down an opportunity, and never run from a challenge. Um, and so when you start to pair some of those guys that have been through the fire the last two or three years, man, you've got a really, really good foundation on your pitching staff that you can lean on and, and help some of those new guys um, kind of see the path. It sounds like you have a lot of new guys that we're going to see and see early and, and see in high leverage situations. But but who are some of the guys that, that may headline and, and, and pop off the page that first home stand? Yeah, a guy named Ernie Day um, is a right-handed pitcher, transfer from Iowa Western Community College where we've had some success. Uh, Logan Jordan is from there. We've had four or five players there, um, you know, in the past, and, and it's one of the best junior colleges in the country. I think they've won, like, three out of the last ten national titles and, and whatever, but he's a big arm. He was originally committed to Mississippi State, and, and they moved on, and, and we were able to jump in because we recruited him real hard. Um, in the fall, and, and when they dropped him, we were able to, to kind of pick him up. Big arm, 
always has had, you know, questionable command and, and he has worked tremendously hard and taken some really, really good coaching from coach Robinson and, and Eric miles, our, our director of pitching development. Um, and, and, and I mean, this past weekend, he was 93 to 96 with four pitches for strikes. Um, and essentially just carved us up, you know, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm texting coach Holcomb. He was out of town. I'm texting coach Holcomb. I'm like, Hey man, like Ernie day is going to be a big leaguer and we can't hit. So, um, <laughs> hopefully we throw a bunch of shutouts and, and, yeah. and, and all that, but he, he's a guy that that's got a chance to be, to be really good. It, the, the, the ceiling is really high. Uh, we've got a transfer from East Tennessee state university, a kid named Hunter Lloyd. That's a right-handed pitcher that uh, was a weekend starter for them in the SoCon for, for two years. Um, he pitched in, in the Cape this summer as well, and, and he's going to be a guy that, that's got a chance to solidify some of our weekend or midweek rotation, um, has, has a ton of Division I college experience, and, uh, and, and a really, really big-time competitor. Got, got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. And so he fits right in with us yeah, and our right? guys and, and our staff. <laughs> and, um, and, and then, uh, you know, Chance Dequila is, is another right-handed pitcher that, that came from Catawba Valley Community College here in North Carolina. Um, just a good old boy, hard worker, funny as the day is long, full of, of energy and character. We say that he's, you know, that he's a crafty righty. He's he's 89 to 92 with four pitches for strikes and and uh, just fills it up and and uh, you know it's it's pretty good when you got a 92 mile an hour right hander that's crafty. Yeah, you're you're when you first started here, your crafty right handers were about 78 to 81. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I mean. You know, I, we we joke about some of the some of the guys. In fact, Michael Horrell, uh, who's up to Double A with the Astros, yeah. was 2019 Big South Pitcher of the Year. He he came and threw in the scrimmage the other day, and he said, "Hey, coach, like just like just be honest with me. I mean, this guy's in Double A. He said, "Hey, if I if I was in high school right now, w would you recruit me?" And I said, "No." <laughs> Like, I mean, I know, I know, I know you are the big South pitcher of the year and you, and you have had a tremendous career in yeah. 30th round draft by the Astros and you might make it to the big leagues one day, man. But like when, where you were, when you were in high school and we recruited you, um, compared to, to where we are now, just in, in, in our ability to recruit better talent and, and guys with, with a little bit better present stuff. He wouldn't have been a guy that, that would have ended up on our radar, which is a good thing, you know, and, and um, I think just shows you where our coaching staff yeah. is and where our developmental process is with our guys. Unbelievable. P position player wise, um, you know, what excites you about this group led by Drake Pearson, who is the preseason Big South Conference uh, player of the year? Yeah, Drake's a stud, man. Again, he, he's a guy that, that we recruited out of junior college. He's from California, Southern California. He's a, he's already graduated, so he's in grad school, which is which is awesome. And and I think, you know, if you know Drake or or if you know the story of Drake, he's the first person in his family that's ever graduated from college. You know, and and so when Drake came here, you know, we didn't know we were going to get supreme athlete, good kid, a little bit rough around the edges. Again, our our type of guy, <laughs> we, we we like some bandits, right? Like we <laughs> like some guys that that need some coaching and some developing. Um, and, and he has just worked his tail off. I think his first year, maybe he got three at bats for yeah. us. Um, and then last year hit 19 home runs, hit 330 something and, and really just solidified the, the middle of our order because he took it personal and he wanted to work and he wanted to play in, in a world of, of the transfer portal and everything else, man. Like he could have left and gone back home and gone back to Southern California and he stayed and worked and earned it. And so I think that in and of itself just earns him some respect um, and, and, and some leadership qualities that, that, that's just really hard to find in today's, you know, young people. And, and so we're excited about him. We're excited about him just, just being able to settle in into the middle and, again, lead by example. We're, I really want our guys to, if they're going to expect a lot from other people, they, they have to be willing to give a lot. And, and he's one of those guys that certainly has has worked really hard. Obviously, the, the offense will look a little bit different without Zach Neto and, and Connor Denning and some of those guys packed in there in the middle that have, uh, you know, two, three, four hundred college at-bats. But you got guys like Jared Belbin, you know, coming back and, and also hit 19 home runs, hit, hitting the leadoff spot for us last year. Him and 
him and Drake were were kind of neck and neck in terms of yep. you know pushing for that 20 home run, 20 stolen base mark, which which would be tremendous. Um, Logan Jordan hitting the four hole for us last year. Um, Grant Nip had some some playing time. Lawson Harrell. It's going to be an exciting offense. We got some big, strong, physical guys that that have a chance to hit the ball out of the yard, but we also have some really, really good athletes that got a chance to press on the bases and and be able to to pressure you in a number of different ways. And so, again, we want the product that we put on the the field to be enjoyable to watch, but we also want it to be pressure filled for the people that we're playing against. And and I think we have enough pieces to be able to do that. <laughs> With Evan Budrovich, I'm Chris Haymeyer. We are literally a week away from our spring sports starting. We already have golf and tennis in full swing. No pun intended. Basketball doing well on both the men's and women's side. Wrestling doing what they do undefeated in conference. So a lot to talk about. But I want to start with track and field because they're indoor start to the season has been amazing again this is the defending champions in the big south on the men's side as far as track and field goal but uh, amazing it, it started off the year started off with dominic alexander posting one of the best uh times in the 200 meters in the entire world save it was up there in division one it was close to a big south record it was a school record but it was one of the best in the entire world and they just keep on rolling and keep on rolling. They had three more claim Big South Weekly honors. Dorcas Ewoy, of course, who has been the distance runner on the women's side doing everything. Patience Marshall. That's a great story. She is our thrower that has come back from injury. You will not find a nicer person or a more talented. She won first place. She's at been injured the last week. two years. Yeah, like, hasn't I competed guess that's since true. the spring of 20. Yeah, and she was an NCAA qualifier. And then C.J. McBride. He has been phenomenal. He is three for three. He's been in three uh, events in this winter so far, and he has earned first place in all of them in the high jump. So uh, the Campbell track and field team indoor just getting off to an amazing start. And I love that McBride's an apex kid. He has local ties. He's been a Big South champion before, and now they go to South Carolina, the other USC this weekend for an event. So props to them. That's a great start to the year. Our men's and tennis, men's and women's tennis team will be at Wake coming up, oh. and uh, yeah, they have to go. You got to you got to uh, learn Wake somehow, course. right? Yep, yeah. yep. The men's golf team started off their season um, this past uh, weekend, and then uh, both men's and women's basketball. We'll start with the women's basketball team. They are solidly in second place right now. They've uh, put together back to back road wins, and they are doing it without their best score. Shai Tuli. Now looking like she's going to be out for the entire season, but they keep doing what they do, which is racking up wins. Another 16-point, 15-rebound game for Christabella Zuma. To put that into context, right, double-doubles are hard to come by. She has 75% of her games picked up a double-double. So three out of four, she gets one. Wow. And Taya Bolden was the queen of double-doubles, yeah. right? She, she would average 20 a year. So we've seen this before, but... Christabel only played eight minutes a game last year. So now she's an elite rebounder, scorer. I bet she'll be first team all conference, which is good news for Christabel. And, you know, this team is scrappy. They don't make a lot of free throws, but they find ways to win games late. The sweep shakes on Wednesday night, Ronnie Fisher tradition. You get a win on the road, you get your milkshake. Yeah. And they swept upstate for the year, as did the men. Right. So that's our first double sweep, right? With the yeah. round robin? Yeah, I think so far this year it's it's that weird schedule. Not weird schedule, but, I mean, it's tough when you're trying to, the to schedule. do stuff for, for for both teams. But, yeah, you, you play the same team on the same day, one away, one home. So Campbell doing it. Believe it or not, folks, we just have a total. This is a total between both the men's and women's uh, home games are down to four for the women and three for the men. The women will be home this Saturday. They take on Longwood at two. It's Alumni Day, Girls and Women's in Sports Day. They're expecting nearly 150 uh, friends and family will be there for Alumni Day. I then. call that Wanda Watkins Day. Uh, no doubt, no doubt. I have they given all come Wanda back permission to not yep. work the broadcast that day <laughs> so she can circle the rounds yep. and see all of her old friends and teammates. That's, uh, that's awesome. Um, and then the women will be back home on Saturday the 11th, Saturday the 25th, and Wednesday the 22nd on the men's side there's just three home games left 
as they finish uh, their last two games on the road. So it'll be February 8th, which Low is coming point. up on Wednesday against those High Point Panthers. February 15th against Charleston Southern on Wednesday. And then Saturday, Senior Day, February 18th against Presbyterian. Now for the men, they are solidly in third and sixth place now. They have won three out of their last four games. And sixth place is good place because that gets you a first round bye in the Big South tournament coming up in a month. And really, too, they will be favored in all of their home games coming up, their next three home games. On the road, it'll be a challenge. It's four teams that have beaten them and that are all um, above them in the standings. But if Campbell goes 500-ish on the men's side, they will be and earn a first-round bye, which is so important this year because on the men's side, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, oh, yeah. quarterfinals, semifinals, finals, just like we used to have back in the ACC when things made sense and there was only eight teams in a league. But anyway, um, so it's, it's, it's essential to get a bye because it's going to be nearly impossible, um, especially uh, to win three games in three days. If you we had saw to play the Campbell team with Chris Clemens yeah. in 17 that made it to a final as a play-in Totally team. ran out of gas. Exhausted. Yeah. And Chris scored 50 points a game yep. in that tournament, yep. and they did not have enough to beat Winthrop. So you're right. Credit to the men, though. Four guys in double figures on Wednesday. Yeah. Jesus Carolero, I saw him in warm-ups. Now he has the, the cast on. He does have made, a cast. Made every three yeah. with a cast on in right, warm-ups. Right. Like, the kid can Cast shoot. is on his non-shooting hand, Jesus Carolero. For those just new to the show, finding us on Apple and Spotify podcast. Thanks for joining. <laughs> it was uh, He is a, a, a starter, one of the best stat stuffers in the entire conference, and he's been out since game six. And there's hope that he could come back at the end of the year still. There is. You know, Shai Tuli, we mentioned, probably won't come back. Yeah. He has a chance maybe in the last two weeks to – work his way back in, but Devin Dunn healthy again, a three-point marksman, looking really good. Ricky Clemens, and McGeehan noted this in his post game, drew nine fouls. Yeah, One of the hardest guys to guard who can't shoot. It's, one, it's like, right, the kid who cannot shoot a three to save his life, no one can guard him in the paint. Yes. He's incredible getting to the free throw. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree they with you. They call him Slick Rick for they a do. reason. They do. And, and he tweets after every win. Yeah. Roll. Yes, he does. And now we all reply humps. He's, he's a great he's a big uh, camel guy. He's a great, he's a great Twitter follower, a 50-year guy that started off as a walk-on. Um, just incredible. So the, the, the women, they are firmly in second place. Three games behind Gardner-Webb uh, the, for first place. They will play Gardner-Webb again. Never say never in, in this conference as well. But it's looking like those are the two top teams. going to be tough for – the Campbell women to catch Gardner Webb, but again, they, they've got that big one against Gardner Webb um, coming up here at home. And so, High Point dropped a home game. They did. So they get a little cushion, yeah. and they play the Panthers in two weeks. So you could really cement second place if you win these next two. And, and then what would be really good as well, their quarterfinals are on Thursday. Both the men and women, they're both saying playing at the same Bojangles Arena in the in the Bojangles Coliseum down there in Charlotte. But it could set up if if everything holds uh, at the very least. Uh, the women play in the quarterfinals on Thursday. The men on Friday. Hopefully, both will be playing on the Saturday. semifinals on on Saturday, and then so on and so and forth. And let's do the double dip on Sunday. Men's final Why early don't we? in the day. Yes. Women's final late at night. Let's yep. let's do it. Yep. So you know, if you're thinking about it, and you come down to a to Charlotte, it could be a long weekend, or even that not long of a. I mean, weekend. think about this. We're 25 days with this being filmed for Friday. 25 days from the tournament starting. Wow. It's literally yeah. three weeks. Yeah, it's right here. And in less than three weeks, in a week, uh, a bunch more of the spring sports start up. We'll start with baseball. And um, if you didn't hear it, go back and, and listen to our Camel Call Live podcast on Monday. It was all head coach Justin Hare. It I was a whole the hour. Zach Galifianakis references. It was. It was. It was, it was a whole hour of uh, – of me and Justin. I don't think he thought it was as funny as Between Two Ferns or as, as comical as he wanted it to be, but we, we covered a lot of stuff, including um, his stories about how he uh, recruited Cedric Mullins, of course, a former Camel who's now an MLB All-Star playing center field for the Orioles, and Ryan Thompson, who some of you new to Campbell baseball might not be that familiar, but he was a all everything reliever for Campbell, a sidearm guy that kind of threw around 70, but and no one could hit inning. them. 
and he uh, he worked his way up through a couple of organizations, and and now he's really set to begin his fourth full year in Major League Baseball. He's thrown over a hundred uh, games at the Major League level, coming in for the Tampa Bay Rays. So it's a really funny story about he showed up here at campus without a visit and how they were able to convince him to come here. So so, so please uh, tune in to that as uh, it's on the Camel Call podcast. Or even the Harrington story. That was a, a good round yeah, pick. That was a good one. Essentially Thomas like Harrington a, too. well, we'll let you walk onto the team and pitch. Yeah. And then starters get hurt. Yeah, Cam you're Cowan, right. Okay, you're going to throw week one against a top 30 Liberty club, and he gets the win. And they're like, well, I guess he's part of the rotation. Yeah. And now he's drafted. <laughs> yeah. So. Yep, yep, and and really they're expecting a couple more guys that could be drafted. Friday night's starter this year, Cade Keeler, could be a top 20 draft pick again. And how about Daniel Brown? Again. No doubt. Now, we saw him last year. He yeah. suffered from the Y word, Yeah. and now he's a top 150 prospect. I mean, the kid throws 98 miles an hour from the yeah. left side. It may not go straight, but he throws it really hard. There are a lot of a lot of prospects on that team, and again, it's he's had a great mix of homegrown talent, of JUCO guys that has been the bread and butter, and now the program is to a point winning four straight conference championships, getting to four straight NCAA regionals to regional finals is the fact that that he's getting some power five transfers too with the with the transfer portal. Um, He's being guarded, which you should because you never want to start bragging about your team a lot before. But uh, especially with the arms, I think I think that's the difference this year than in past year. He has all the elements that he has, but but he's got high velocity arms and a lot of them. It's not just okay. We got these three guys that can throw ninety five. Ah, one of them's injured. We're gonna have to figure it out, which they have each and every year. But I think the depth of arms that can do stuff uh, is is what might be a difference in this year's team than the very good teams he's had in the past four years. The opening series against Rutgers will say a lot. Rutgers was one of the last teams out of the tournament yeah, last year. They they're won pre- a lot of games. They're preseason top 40 this year. Now, preseason rankings, you know, they come and go. But these two clubs are tournament quality teams. So you'll see right away week one, is the pitching good enough to win at that level? And obviously pitching can do well early versus hitting. We saw that in the App State series last year where nobody could score a run. But, yeah, this pitching staff, it's not just starting pitching this year, but it's bullpen depth. I think that helps. We've never had a deep yeah. bullpen. The more arms you can have that late in the year, you just Good need point. It. It's, especially when you get in a regional situation, where the, whether you win or not, you're still going to need, you know, three days full of arms at the very least to do it. Yeah, it, it's a great way to start the season. Rutgers comes in. February 17th through the 19th, you have that first week against ECU. East Carolina, again, predicted to be in the top 25. Uh, That's on Tuesday the 21st. And then Butler comes in the 24th through the 26th. And then is Campbell the bull, is the bulldog coming? The bulldog is probably not coming. Here's Only, my for on the football trip. Only for basketball. Only for basketball. Um, and and then uh, they go away for a long time. Something a little different. Only twenty four home Orleans. games this year. Yeah. Only twenty four home games this year. And after that seven game homestand, basically a third of the home season is over. So so make sure you're aware. Baseball is starting. And of course, uh, season tickets are on sale now. And uh, single game tickets are also on sale now so get them especially for those games ECU of course uh Duke you, know, you have Duke coming in as well Coastal Carolina the and UNCW a fun two game series UNCW as Hood, well Campbell head coach and a future uh future opponent in the CAA so again Campbell baseball um so much fun and and such tradition and it's it's amazing and again I, I invite you to listen to uh coach Justin here because we go over a whole lot of things this is his 16th year in the program, he was assistant coach before he was a head coach, and it's just uh, it's just amazing uh, what he has built. If I showed you pictures of what the baseball facility looked like ten years ago, you wouldn't believe it. So you were at the county seat for the interview. I was right there. Give me a sense from Lindsay's reaction. You asked him about championships and children, and how the four titles with the four kids. Do you think a fifth child's on the way if they win in May? I, I don't think so from Coach Hares, but I, I mean, he, I thought Coach Hare wanted his own baseball team, but it, it seems to be Lindsay who, who loves children, and why wouldn't you? I have two 17 months old of my own, and they're, uh, and they're amazing. So, so that's the impression that I got. He's good. Because I heard it, I heard knows. it in his tone of yeah. voice, but then you noticed that Lindsay was over yeah. there, and I'm like, well, I wonder what she's feeling about yeah, this. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. She is the team behind the team. It's amazing. Um, he has uh, three boys and a girl, and they range in age. 
I think it's from nine to two. And if you go to a baseball game, you will see, see them. them on the hill. Yep. They are uh, getting their exercise and, then ta- and energy out. Taylor Robinson and Tyler Robinson. They have two kids it's a now. Family affair. And those both go to every game. Yep. Pitching coach, former uh, women's lacrosse assistant coach. Uh, it's just uh, it's just phenomenal. Equally, a program that has really built from nothing. It they've had a a shorter term, but but our softball team. Yeah. Um, changing hands, a, a new coaching staff, a great coaching staff. I think uh, this is a softball team that's not going to miss a beat. They start for real. Oh, yeah. They get after it. 10 a.m. coming up a week from today. They will play five games in the Charlotte Invitational, ETSU, Charlotte, Miami of Ohio a couple times, and South Carolina. And that's before – um, a week from this coming Thursday on February 16th, and they will the open up the season. And did the schedule plan this on purpose? A little Gigi Barefoot, Isabella rematch? I mean, I mean, I, I mean maybe. Of, program? Uh, of course, going down there uh, uh, to Charlotte, they'll take on the, the former ace of the Campbell staff. But they got some pretty good pitchers, too. So you're right. That'll be an intriguing matchup on uh, Friday at 5.30. That game will be on ESPN+. Plus. And then at home, also on ESPN+. Plus, but uh Great way to get the season going. February 16th, Purdue. Chris Marks? Out oh, wait. Of Sorry. Baseball, The not Big softball. Ten, they come in and will play on February 16th. And then softball back on the road again. So softball season starting up this uh, upcoming weekend. And again, look for them to pick up where they left off. Well, think back to last year's standings. The top four were separated by, what, two games? Yeah. With PC, Upstate, Longwood, Campbell. The preseason poll basically mirrors the regular season from last year. All four teams still very good. Presbyterian with an ace of a pitcher. Longwood has great tradition. The Camels bring back their all-conference ace. And then Upstate can hit. Coach Hawkins does a great job there. So those four teams are really good. Yeah, and yeah. It'll be a great race for a title. And Campbell's in, in, in great hands. It's, uh, it's very similar to what they had in Coach Sharonda McDonald, a former star player who went on to be a fantastic uh, – uh, assistant coach and then and then led Campbell to back-to-back regular season and tournament titles they pulled the double back-to-back years coach Prater really in that same mold but with more ex- experience she was a star at LSU she has been an assistant in a lot of great places she led Hampton to a conference title and that with no resources and not much of a tradition. She was able to do that there. She was and at Iowa funny. and that, yeah. I talked to her at the Hall of Fame oh banquet. Gosh, she has a yeah. great personality. And, yeah. th- and that's something you, you need as a coach of a – because softball, it, that's a high-intensity sport, a lot of energy. You're playing six games in a weekend in the tournament. Right. Like, you need to bring the juice yourself, and that staff is very amped up. Yeah, yeah, they very are. And she is, you know, full of assistants that have played uh, great softball at a, at a high level, too. And and they're fired up and, and, and definitely are coming in, going to try to, you know, extend, which, which has been an unbelievable tradition. Have we ever had a three-peat in softball? No. Back to back in 08 and 09. Yeah, back to back in 08 and 09. And in uh, women's lacrosse, they will start the season at home Saturday, February 11th, a week from this Saturday, um, noon against Stetson. As, Remember the uh, old high noon kickoffs we yep. had for PFL football? Yep, well, it'll be a high noon kickoff for, uh, for, for women's lacrosse. And again, you know, last year, Coach Easley really had, had built towards that season. She had a team that was phenomenal, and literally top three players were injured and couldn't play or could barely play by the end of the year or that would have been a, a, a much different story. She would have had one or two uh, trophies to add and to her trophy case. And a neat part of their schedule, they play an inaugural Clemson team March 8th on the road. That's Clemson's first year of women's lacrosse. And we've seen the Campbell program yeah. now in almost a decade grow from Taylor Robinson at the right. time, you know, as a young player, and now she's the coach. And think about the growth. It, it's kind of neat. You see ECU on the schedule, who was an inaugural program five years ago, and Campbell played them, and now they're at the kind of the same level. And – the, the Big South lacrosse is very competitive. We saw Mercer last year win an NCAA tournament game. High Point has won multiple conference titles, you know, so those three are, are up there. It, it'll be a, a good tournament as well. Lacrosse and, uh, and softball, you can get in absolutely free. Of course, students uh, in for free for uh, baseball games and kids 12 and under in for free with an adult paid admission for baseball as well. Our wrestling home schedule has wrapped up, but they uh, they really have the schedule makers have uh, <laughs> given our our wrestling team 
a a rough one as far as at the end of the year. Now, but if, I will say the wrestling team wants that. That's true. They want to play Chattanooga. They want to build up. At the yeah, end of the year. yeah. And and if you're not familiar with SoCon wrestling, there are a couple teams that are okay. There are a bunch of teams that are not. And there's three teams that are at the top, App State and Campbell, clearly at the top, although if you're paying much attention, Campbell has won the SOCON tournament the last four years. They have won the conference regular season title three out of the last four years. So there is some separation there, but it's always close matches regular season and in the tournament. Chattanooga had the tradition really until about 10 years ago, but they are, are right there in a team that can get you. So, so Campbell undefeated in conference, of course, they'll go at the Citadel on Sunday. Bellarmine, who is in the SOCON in wrestling next Friday, and then there it is, back-to-back Sundays on the 12th and 19th, unfortunately away, but that's when they'll take on Chattanooga and App State. And those two from those three will decide the conference regular season title. Again. All three are 4-0 right now, so it's gearing up for a great final two weeks. It is gearing up for a great final two weeks. Is this your last weekend to kind of rest in terms of the crossover? Because basically February 11th, 12th is when it really hits. Yeah, cr- crossover this year. And uh, and for those not familiar with the lingo, uh, <laughs> crossover happens every November and February where our fall sports bleed into our winter and our winter sports bleed into a spring. It's a fun time of year. For fans. At times, it can it can be a lot, and and this year what we have going on, we're always home for the last couple of weeks of basketball. It's either going to be men or women on Wednesday and Saturday, and that makes things um, a lot. I think I counted up something that between oh, all the softball the tournaments. 15th and the 26th, there are home events every single day but one, and we are going to try to stream all of those on ESPN+. Plus. So I, I think there's a stretch where there's – Five, five days in a row where we're doing streaming and uh, yeah, so it'll be it'll be good. We'll see if my voice can uh, can stay, but it's it's fun too. Again, you have you have two Big Ten teams oh, yeah. coming in the the weekend of the sixteenth to to start things off between Purdue starting the season uh, home season against the softball team and and then Rutgers. So it's fun, but wow. You still got basketball and stuff going on. And if the weather's like this, oh, it's going to be real well, remember fun. remember when we played Purdue in baseball, it snowed that morning. Yeah. And the players for Campbell went to the outfield and shoveled the snow yeah. into the warning track. Grant Harris actually had a home run on a snow hill in right field because there was so much snow packed Gosh, in the outfield. I, for, I, I forgot about that. Yeah. It, it also, uh, also a good thing to remind the, the, the schedule we makers that— We had to pull that, like four kids out of class yeah. to help work the cameras for the stream. Mid-February in Florida, pretty good. Mid-February in North the, Carolina, uh, in North Carolina it's, uh, it's here or there. But it'll be fun and uh, rain or shine, cold or not, the Campbell fans will come out. And again, when you got baseball like that, um, it'll be— It'll be fun. And that ECU game, the, the first Tuesday night, is electric. Yeah. ECU fans come out. The students usually are packed in the section. Like, that'll be an, an incredible – if you pick one game, go to that right. game, for the sec, the first February game. It's, it's incredible. For Evan Budrich, I'm Chris Haymeyer saying so long. This has been Camel Call 